I'm not allowed to speak on certain topics in SO31s. I've had SO31s removed, and I've been told that if I, I have it on certain topics that I simply won't be given SO31. I have had my rights taken away when it comes to representing my constituents on certain topics, and I just don't think that's appropriate. Conservative MP Leon Benoit standing up to, well, defend his colleague, his compatriot, Mark Warwa, who's about to join us now. Now, he was talking about SO31s. For those that don't speak House of Commons lingo, that is a member's statement. Now, this all started a bit of a revolt in the Conservative backbench today. It all started when Mark Warwa stood up and said his rights as a member of Parliament to speak for his constituents had been violated. Mark Warwa joins us now, sir. Uh, SO31s, member statements, give people a, a quick idea of what that is and, and why you say your rights as a parliamentarian to speak for your constituents were trampled. Well, Brian, every member of parliament has responsibilities to be in the House, um, and the ultimate responsibility is to represent your constituent. Mine being uh, the riding of Langley and the incredible people there that have elected me, uh, I have a, rep rep a responsibility to represent them. That's clearly in the rules. And so part of that is a tool, a toolkit that you use to represent your community. Member statements, known as SO31s, uh, those are one of those tools in the toolbox. And it's supposed to be equally distributed amongst the members of Parliament, all 308 of us. So um, I have an opportunity, or had an opportunity last Thursday, it was my turn, uh, to introduce a SO31 member statement, and uh, it was removed. And um, who removed it and why? Well, the whips of the different parties, and this is not a one party issue, it's, it's under the, uh, all the different parties, the NDP, Liberal, Conservative, uh, every party has a whip and they, can, they provide the speaker with the list of who is going to be speaking. The, it is though required that everybody has an equal opportunity to provide the member's statement representing their community. So I had one, uh, I was going to be speaking about um, the, I've been going around touring and speaking on my motion M408 and I was at my local university, Trinity Western, I was at mm -hmm. Simon Fraser, I was at UBC and um, that was removed and uh, we have the right, the privilege as members of parliament to make those statements. So my question to the speaker was, do, does uh, the whips of the different parties, do they have the right to take away that privilege? And it's clear, clearly I'm expecting the speaker to to rule that they do not. So, so you've asked the Speaker to essentially free up members of Parliament to a degree to be able to speak their minds on issues. Now, uh, Gordon O'Connor, the Conservative Whip, stood up and said, no, Mr. Speaker, we interpret the rules differently. This shouldn't happen. You know, you'll set a bad precedent if you do. I'm going to guess that the whips of the other parties would say the same things. But are you getting support, quiet whispers, a, a nod saying, hey, I'm with you on this from from MPs and other parties who are constrained because, you know, you guys, your party has the reputation of being run by a control freak. Uh, Stephen Harper controls everything. And then when uh, they don't control everything you say, then they're denounced for not controlling what you say. So it's a bit of an odd thing that goes on with the media. But my experience is all the parties are like this. They don't want anyone speaking out of turn for what the party feels is important at that day. So are you getting support from other MPs? Uh, yes, and let me say that I, I greatly respect our Prime Minister. I think Stephen Harper is one of the best Prime Ministers Canada has ever had. Uh, what I've asked is clarification because members are not getting their, their rights that are due. They need to have those statements and the different parties, not just the Conservative Party, all the different parties are not giving the members the rights that they have. It's been a bit of a creep. I mean, if you remember yes. back to the early reform days, it was let MPs speak their minds. Even back then, this was a problem. Uh, but it's been a bit of a creep away from individual MPs towards parties having control. Th this is all related to motion M408 though which brings us back to the issue of MPs and control and the issue of abortion. M408, I want to read people what it says. You were looking to simply say sex selective abortion is wrong. Here's the motion that the House condemned discrimination against females occurring through sex selective pregnancy termination. Now, there was an end Veronics poll done a little while ago. It showed almost unanimously Canadians said, hey, we're opposed to this. 92% say they were opposed to this. Did you expect your motion that just asked the House to condemn a practice, not change the law, did you expect your motion to create so much controversy and be deemed non-votable? Uh, well, 
no, I did not expect uh, anybody to oppose this because as on June the 13th of last year, after the CBC article on the National on the 12th, the 13th, every political party said uh, we condemn sex selection. So and this was, this was a story that CBC did on the issue of sex selective abortions happening in Canada correct. and being advertised, if I'm correct. And so uh, this is what all the positions of all the parties were, is that we opposed this. And so my motion, just instead of political statements, it was the House of Commons making the same statement that everybody made on the 13th. So I've been very surprised that there was any opposition to this. And as you point out, the vast majority of Canadians, 92%, say, yes, this should be even illegal. I'm not looking to make it illegal. It's just a strong, unified statement saying this shouldn't be happening. We should not discriminate against girls in this way. And, and, and for people that aren't familiar, sex-selective abortion is someone goes, gets an ultrasound, find out, finds out that it's a girl, and that's the only reason that they then go forward and have uh, an abortion. It, they terminate the pregnancy because they don't want to have girls. Correct, and it's a, uh, it's a very serious problem. In the world right now, we have 200 million missing girls. Um, that creates, uh, it's the number one fueler for human trafficking, forced prostitution, it involves forced sterilization. Uh, it's a very serious problem that the world has right now. The UN has asked for governments to speak out against this. That's what my motion does. So uh, it should be votable. It's, it's, I'm really surprised that also they're trying to make it non-votable and break the rules by doing that. So tomorrow you go before the whole committee. So it was a subcommittee last week of the House Procedural uh, procedure and Affairs Committee that said, no, this motion is not votable. You launch an appeal tomorrow to the full committee, correct? Correct. And, and the analyst from the Library of Parliament, the expert that's to advise us, uh, he repeatedly said it does meet the criteria, it should be votable, uh, and yet uh, the, the members, the three members representing each of the three parties, they all said, no, we're going to make it non-votable, uh, with no reason to make it non-votable. So hopefully the PROC, will, proc committee will do the right thing, that's tomorrow, uh, if they, they also deem it non-votable, which is breaking the rules of Parliament, then Parliament really has a big problem. All right, Mark Warwa, well, best of luck with that uh, tomorrow. Uh, look, folks, it doesn't matter which side of the abortion debate you're on, if Parliament can't speak up and say, aborting baby girls just for being baby girls is wrong, then what have we come to? Send me your thoughts, byline at sunmedia.ca.